Let me first decide date of class test two. It will be in the regular class hour, either Tuesday or Wednesday. कब चाहिए? Let me first decide class test two date. <coughs> It will be during the usual class timing, twelve to one. You want it on Tuesday or if you are busy on Tuesday, I'll put it on Wednesday. जल्दी से बताओ ट्यूजडे ट्यूजडे इस ट्यूजडे चलेगा यस क्वेश्चन वट एवर वी हैव डन अप टू ट्रांजियंट बिफोर ट्रांजियंट एक्साइटेशन हाउ एवर For mid-semester, transient excitation also will be in syllabus. ठीक है? Mid-semester के लिए थोड़ा सा idea अभी से बता देता हूँ. It is one hour exam. There will be around five questions minimum. It can be more than five also. So those who have not uh, experienced exam by me let let them know in question paper number of questions generally 5 se 6 kuch hoga some may be small questions some may be large question <coughs> marks will be varying two marks ka bhi question ho sakta it is out of 25 by this time you know so 25 may be From five or six question, some questions may be small, two marks. Some question can be big, five and six marks. Second, <clears throat> I never give choice in my conventional choice in my question paper. I never say answer any five of six or any three out of four. I never say that, but. i give option in a different manner it is that total number of marks may be more than 25 theek hai so suppose total is coming out to be 26 or 27 this is a very innovative way i think in india nobody prepares question like this or throughout the world i generally prepare a question with little more marks the advantage you get is even if you make a mistake of one or two marks still you can score 25 out of 25 that is the beauty but you have to you have to attempt all the question then only you can score 25 out of 25 so the total may be little more than, i mean do you do you like it or aditya is laughing i know why he is smiling aditya uh, garbad hai to i will withdraw अच्छा लग रहा आइडिया कुछ नया सुनने को मिल रहा है अच्छा तो पिछले एक महीना सब पुराना कुछ सुने क्या नहीं सर रिगार्डिंग एग्जाम रिगार्डिंग एग्जाम देर आर सो मेनी न्यू थिंग्स मार्क्स मार्क्स और ग्रेड सामने आने के बाद सब कुछ नया दिखेगा बोलेगा एक कौन सा दुनिया में आ गया इतने दिन तो हम मजे में थे सडनली यू विल रियलाइज सब कुछ नया दिखेगा डोंट वरी बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस सेमेस्टर द होल वर्ल्ड विल अपियर टू बी न्यू बिफोर यू वाइन सो दिस इज माई क्वेश्चन पैटर्न ओनली थिंग इज सब्बा आवर गेस्ट आर्टिस्ट लाइक अमिताभ बच्चन ज्वाइंड एट द एंड क्या सब्बा ब्रेकफास्ट चल रहा था क्या नो सर माई वेबेक्स वॉज नॉट वर्किंग बट देन हाउ आर यू अटेंडिंग नाउ सर इट वॉज वेरी स्लो I restarted. Let it be slow. No, no, you can't blame you know internet because we people, we human being, we have been so slow. So why? How can we blame internet nowadays? 
they have also become slow after vnit students have joined internet internet itself has become slow google has become slow mm. sundar pichai was asking me what is wrong with vnit you know i am fortunate that when i was doing my mtech in kharagpur 88 to 90 two important personalities were in campus one was sundar pichai and the second one was arvind kejriwal arvind kejriwal was doing btech and i was doing mtech same time same time okay arvind kejriwal finished his btech in 89 of course my mtech is 88 to 89 december sundar pichai was doing his btech from 88 to 92 anyway uh, let's not talk about them those were the days we generally say those were the days i still uh, cherish my iit days because that was a different world that was a different world forget about that let us come come back to vnit <coughs> ab uh, mujhe jo kal khabar mila vnit ke ki vnit mein aisi baat chal rahi hai ki online teaching is excellent and let us continue it forever is tarah ka kuch baat mujhe sunne ko aaya vnit mein from administration they all are um, uh, making a comment that online is perfectly correct way of teaching they are impressed by the cgp of all the students no student is failing there is no w problem there is no fa problem grade card has improved teachers are happy students are happy administration is also happy ठीक है सो माइंड बी दिस ऑनलाइन सिस्टम विल कंटिन्यू फ्यू मोर मंथ्स इफ नॉट फ्यू मोर डेज इट पॉसिबली इट विल कंटिन्यू फ्यू मोर मंथ्स आई डोंट नो वेदर इट विल कंटिन्यू फ्यू मोर इयर्स और नॉट बट लेट मी कम बैक टू माय सब्जेक्ट द प्रॉब्लम विथ माय सब्जेक्ट इज दैट आई सिंपली कैन नॉट टीच इट ऑनलाइन आई आई एम बीइंग आस टीच इट ऑनलाइन आई नो आई हैव प्रॉब्लम there are so many things which i find it difficult to teach in online but still i have to do it i can't help it so our class test will be on uh, you decided tuesday isn't it so we will start at 1215 you will join before 1215 we'll start at 1215 up to 115 but you will join 125 little early exam will begin from 1215 for 1 hour uh pattern of class test will be something different uh there may be there need not be five question your mid semester exam will be time tight but class test you may have little better question but mid semester questions will be tough they will be tough and time also may not be as much so i generally advise take a print out or write your own class note in a notebook during the exam don't try to look at your uh, study material on the computer it it sub time it it sub time all important formula you write in your hand on a single page keep it ready during the exam so that you don't lose time looking at them searching for them during the exam you can refer any textbook any class note anything you can do except you cannot talk to each other i mean you cannot communicate or help each other otherwise you can look at any class note or any textbook no problem theek hai exam ke bare aur kuch suggestion kuch puchna hai to abhi pucho nahi to main lecture chalu karta hu kisi ko kuch suggestion hai question will be tough so in that background any suggestion any facility you want a marking is always if you have noted part marking is also there kabhi kabhi hum question ka marks split karte hai 2 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 
so that is called part marking if part marking is there even if you make a mistake in between you can get partial of marks but if part marking is not there if a question says three you may lose you may get zero out of three you cannot complain it depends where you are making the mistake so you have to be very very careful Chalo, uh, you take out the camera let us start today's discussion take out the camera and look at the screen we will start with a little bit of uh, heavy mathematics but first let me bring the screen where is it yeah here it is so look at the screen and try to digest cut the screen and try to digest I will explain it, but first to look at the screen and try to write down because writing uh, gives you better understanding. So try to write down also. Uh, we are basically discussing from yesterday some unusual excitation force unusual so yesterday we have taken up half sine wave excitation today we will discuss two three more we have just begun with a very important excitation name is impulse excitation which graphically is represented by a sharp peak and mathematically described by this try to understand this mathematics this impulse excitation is mathematically described by this and graphically it is represented by a sharp peak first if you have any question you are unable to understand anything please ask me uh, i didn't get that alpha by uh, minus alpha to alpha and it is not alpha it is not alpha i'm sorry uh, my writing style may be wrong it is infinity infinity okay sir okay sir infinity minus infinity to plus infinity but i'm expecting question if see what at least you should be in a position to ask question Okay, since there is no, no question from your side, I presume that you have understood it. But even if you have understood it, I must explain. <clears throat> Impulse excitation is such, is a very peculiar ex excitation. Why we call it very peculiar? Because the value of the excitation is zero everywhere except at one instant t is equal to zero okay so value of the excitation is zero everywhere except at 
a single instant of time or point of time that is t is equal to 0. Second, at t is equal to 0, it is not 0, but how much it is, we don't know. We don't know. This is a very peculiarity aspect of impulse excitation. We only know at t is equal to 0, it has a high value, high non-zero value. But how much? Is it 2? Is it 4? Is it 5? We don't know. And why we don't know? Can you answer it? Is it our limitation of knowledge? Why we don't know? Think it practically. Answer is uh, practical answer, not mathematical answer. Why we never know the height of the impulse excitation? Why? Are you thinking about it? You're thinking about Classmates, at least 13, 14 students may koi bhi jawab nahi dega, to fir BNIT mein kaise engineer banega? It occurs for such a short time that we can't react in time. We can't measure it. That is the correct answer. It doesn't last. Theoretically, it, it only comes and go in an instant. So even if we want to measure it, we can't do it. However, fortunately, even if we cannot measure the height, we can measure the area. We can measure the area. Now remember, practically, theoretically, this will look like a vertical line and therefore, theoretical area is zero. But practically, it will take some small time, maybe epsilon time. It, in practical cases, it will take some time. It cannot be zero. It will take some time, maybe epsilon. And because of that time, small time duration, it will have some area. And that area we can mathematically represent 0 minus to 0 plus. So 0 minus to 0 plus is the non-zero epsilon time gap. So there will be the area. The area is integration. So this integration actually represents the area. That area, if it comes out to be 1, let me repeat again, that area, if it comes out to be 1, we call it unit impulse excitation. If it is something else, we only say impulse excitation. We don't say unit impulse. So impulse excitation can have the area is equal to 1 or can have the area something different. If it is is equal to 1, it is a special case. We call it unit impulse excitation. So our mathematics will always include unit impulse excitation. But in practice, an impulse excitation may not be unit impulse excitation always. Okay. Now, this area is mathematically comes out to be 1. Practically, let me come back to the graph again. Practically, we cannot measure the height, but we can measure the area. Yes, eh? Is excitation ke naam humne impulse excitation kyo rakha? <clears throat> we are not calling it force excitation. Be careful. So far, we have used two nomenclature. Force excitation, support excitation or motion excitation. That also I have used for vehicles. The excitation is not in the form of force. Excitation is in the form of a motion. We call it support excitation or motion excitation. Today we are using a new term, impulse excitation. 
Why I'm bringing the word impulse here? Can anybody answer? Impulse occurs for a very short time. Uh, you are correct, but slightly I will modify the sentence. Here, the system doesn't understand the force. System understand handover of an impulse. Because what is this area? Physically, what is this area? Force integrated over time. So what does it give us in physics? It gives Momentum. us impulse. It gives us impulse. Mm -hmm. force, mm -hmm. in, force integrated over time gives us impulse. And impulse is mass into change in velocity. Impulse is mass into change in velocity. So the system understands that there has been a force. He tries to feel the or measure the force. He cannot. But he can measure the impulse. How he can measure the impulse? Because this value, if it is 1, it will bring a velocity in the system such that m into v is equal to 1. So v, that is x dot 0, will be 1 by m. Agree? So whenever impulse excitation acts on a mass m, the mass which was at rest, it achieves a velocity, a starting velocity x dot 0, whose value is value of impulse divided by m. So if it is unit impulse, x dot 0 will be 1 by m. This concept we apply for a single degree of freedom system. Okay? Chalo, isko padho, samjho, aur likho. I, I will not explain. I think you can yourself understand it. We have neglected damping. So my equation is mx double dot plus kx is equal to force. And force is nothing but unit impulse. So whenever this delta will appear, this delta is always unit impulse. If the impulse is not unit, we will write it some constant multiplied by unit impulse. So only delta is always unit impulse. So I'm looking at the equation little before time t is equal to zero and little after time t is equal to zero. Equation remains same. Equation doesn't change. But Condition of displacement and velocity, it changes. So little before time t is equal to 0, system was at rest. Displacement was 0, velocity was 0. But after the impulse has come and gone, displacement is still 0. But system acquires a velocity which is 1 by m. So this is initial velocity. But because the impulse is gone, Still, my equation is mx double dot plus kx is equal to 0. It is free vibration. Why the free vibration will begin? Because an initial condition has been set up. So what is the solution of free vibration? mx double dot plus kx 0. We know the solution is a cos omega nt plus b sin omega nt. In this free vibration solution, we apply the initial condition x 0 is 0 x dot 0 is 1 by m. Phir hume kya milta hai dekho? So in the free vibration solution, we apply <coughs> this condition. x 0 is 0, but velocity is not 0. Velocity is impulse divided by mass. 1 by m. Because it is unit impulse, 1 by m. So what do we get? Xt, xt for t greater than 0, what do we get?
uh, it will be one upon m into sin omega nt. No, no. Fine, fine. Fine, fine. Fine, fine. You have made a mistake. What about others? It should not take more than one minute. Forget about five minutes. It should not take more than one minute. We have the solution in the form A cos omega and T plus B sin omega and T. We have to find out A and B from the initial condition. And this is the initial condition. Initial displacement is zero. Initial velocity is one by M. Here X किस फॉर्म में आता एक्स कम्स आउट टू बी इन व्हाट फॉर्म हाँ बोलो ए इक्वल टू जीरो बी इक्वल टू वन अपॉन एम डब्ल्यू ओमेगा एन हाँ तो मुझे आंसर बताओ एक्स टी इज इक्वल टू व्हाट वन अपॉन एम इनटू ओमेगा एन इनटू साइन ओमेगा एन टी हाँ बाकी लोग अरे 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 मेरे अंडर ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट लोग तो लगता है इस तरह इतना टाइम ले रहे जैसे नोबेल के लिए कोशिश कर रहे हैं नोबेल प्राइज के लिए दे आर ट्राइंग रिचक मिला कुछ सी इज साइलेंट आई थिंक सी स्टार्ट्स एंड देन गो अवे अच्छा तो चलो आदित्य कुछ मिला ओके आई विल सो माई सोल्यूशन बिकॉज आई कांट वेट सो दिस इज माई सोल्यूशन आई मीन यू शुड गेट सेम थिंग एंड दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट दिस लास्ट लाइन इज इंपॉर्टेंट सो दिस इज माई सोल्यूशन आई गिव यू सम टाइम this particular solution has a name and has a symbol it is always represented by small h in vibration it is always represented by small h small h stands for response to impulse excitation unit impulse excitation briefly we call it irf impulse response function you this is a very important formula we will we'll need it again and again ht is called unit impulse res no sorry impulse response function and ht is equal to 1 by m omega n sin omega nt so if you have understood it let us go for damped oscillator so this is this formula is for undamped oscillator why i am calling it undamped because in our equation of motion if you look at it mx dot plus kx we have not considered damping so now you consider damping and tell me how ht will look like that means you consider the whole equation for which this is the free vibration solution so this is the free vibration solution you try to find out a and b for the same initial condition impulse excitation whether damping is there or not initial condition will remain same that is x0 is 0 x dot 0 is 1 by m so if damping is there my free vibration solution changes 
So this is the free vibration solution for damped oscillator. So this may say Nikalo. Response Kaisa Hoga. I'll give you five minutes here. I'll give you five minutes. Nikalo. Sir, is it one by... Uh, no, no, no. I, I'll show you the answer. You wait. If you have finished, okay. you wait. But I'm a, I I should give enough time for all the student. Okay. Uh, this is the answer. This is the answer. Yeah, all the student, you please finish it quickly and check your answer. This is the answer. Yes, sir, it is same. No, it has to be. You have, you don't have a choice. Only thing, uh, I should give one more minute to remaining students. Those who have finished, can you draw the picture? How it will look like? How graphically it will look like. Can you roughly draw the picture? You just check if you can draw the picture. Other students, have you got it or not? Let me know. Got it, sir. Chalo. Now, so, with little bit of, little bit of progress, let me introduce another unusual excitation. I'm calling it unusual. 
but they are very very important <coughs> step unit step <coughs> excitation fine so unit step excitation is in the form of a force which suddenly grows from zero to unity and then remains at that value remains constant at that value infinitely chalte rehta hai practically what is the uh, there are many things you know switching on your fan so when you switch on your fan voltage across your fan grows from 0 volt to line voltage 210 volt or 220 volt within no time and then it remains and fan also keeps on rotating so this kind of excitation is called step excitation if the value is 1 we call it unit step excitation value need not be 1 always so unit step excitation is a reference in practice a step excitation can have any value it can have any value but for mathematical work we always do the work with unit height and we call it unit step excitation under unit step excitation a single degree of freedom system whatever response it achieves or acquires we call it unit step response so can you find out the response under unit step excitation so first you start with undamped kar sakte ho dimag lagao apna dimag lagao let me see if you can do it or not the excitation i have explained the excitation this is how the excitation looks like its height is 1 this excitation suddenly acts on a spring mass system let us neglect damping now again let us take a simpler case damping is zero can you tell me how its response will look like i will give you 5 minutes again
pf1 omega n into sin omega nt. Sir, Anyone sir. who has the idea how will you proceed kisi ka dimag mein aaya or if anyone who has completed no no I, i'm waiting i will give still 2 3 minutes sir for the understanding ha bolo bolo sahil ha how, how will you proceed sir for understanding it will be x of uh, 1 by omega and sin omega nt nahi 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 it's not easy it's not easy it's not difficult also but it it needs innovative thinking innovative thinking it is uh, not a simple uh, ha bolo uh, will be there a factor for that uh, a constant uh, addition factor uh, that uh, the impulses remain constant so See, this is not impulse excitation this is not impulse this is step excitation Yes, sir. Excitation remains. Excitation doesn't vanish. Please sir, remember just, one thing. No, no, no. One thing you have to understand that initial conditions will still remain. X zero is zero. X dot zero is zero, because it is not impulse. It is not impulse. The force remains. So how do you answer it? I am giving you a little more time. some hint comes here <clears throat> this is the hint the last line is the hint so what is particular integral particular integral is force divided by only k because the magnitude of the force doesn't change with time t so this is not a dynamic force this is a static force under static force displacement will be static dis deflection so it will be force by k so this is particular integral this is the solution of this equation and if i make ft is equal to 0 i get complementary solution so this is the complementary solution on this solution i apply this initial conditions fir mujhe kya milta hai that is called unit step response so please remember for any differential equation general solution will consist of particular integral as well as complementary integral or complementary solution that is not integral complementary solution always always for any differential equation so here the particular integral is very simple 1 by k force divided by stiffness because the force after t is equal to 0 does not change with time t so this is not a dynamic force this is a static force so now you have to evaluate how much is a how much is b with this initial condition you will get the response
factor a is uh, minus one by k. So I don't zero. want a and I don't want a and b separately. I want the answer. How x will look like? How x will look like? I want that. Not a and b separately. Uh, sir, x will be one by k in the bracket one minus cos omega t. Omega n t. Yeah, this is the answer. And this particular response is written using g. So this is the convention. <coughs> Step excitation is always represented by u. I didn't mention it. Yeah, u. X, if it is unit step excitation, it is always represented by the letter U. And corresponding response is always represented by the small letter G. Okay? So in future, if we see this symbol, we have to automatically understand. So this is the response under unit step excitation. Now in exam, suppose I ask this, can you do it? In exam, suppose I ask this, can you do it? Are you ha bolo ya na bolo? Yes, sir, we can do it. Yes. Sir. So, so this is homework. No, 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 no. I mean, it's easy to say we can do it. Like in, uh, a homework hai, theek hai? Isko karke dekho. You, I will not give you the answer, karke dekho. Fine. Now let me come to another unusual excitation. This is third example today. We started with impulse, then we switched over to unit step. And now so let us take care of rectangular pulse excitation. So excitation suddenly goes up, remain constant. For finite duration t, this is called pulse duration, fit zero ho jate. Fine. So mathematically, this is how we explain the excitation. And then we attempt to find out the response. Is it okay? You write down, you write down. Don't skip writing because through writing only you understand it better. So this is rectangular pulse excitation. Graphically, it looks like this. Mathematically, it is represented by this. So what we have to do? We have to find out response during this period and response during this period. This is in presence of force. This is in absence of force. So this will be free vibration. This will be free vibration. We can easily find out free vibration if we put the initial condition at t is equal to capital T whatever is the displacement whatever is the velocity that becomes initial condition for second phase of response but to find out displacement and velocity here we have to know how response varies during the phase one so phase one solution is this because this is unit step excitation this is the solution as long as force exist so in this solution if we put chota t is equal to capital t so this is the displacement at this point this is the velocity at this point now this becomes initial displacement and initial velocity for phase two vibration so what is the solution of phase two vibration solution of phase two vibration is a cos omega n t minus t remember Time has, has to be shifted because my phase two vibration begins after time t. So this is t minus t and this is also t minus t. With the initial condition xt 
is this x dot t is this so if we solve it we do little bit of mathematics and we end up here so because time is not limited you just look at the final line you just look at the final line okay so this is my phase two vibration formula what does it tell us It tells us that the response will vary as per a sine curve, but this will be the amplitude of response. So this is the amplitude of response. Okay. So if we draw a graph, if we draw a graph, so let me draw the graph. Yeah. If we draw the graph, this is that amplitude variation. This is amplitude variation in phase two vibration, in phase two vibration. Phase two, let me go back. T by Tn, sine T by Tn. Suppose T by Tn is one. Suppose T by Tn is one. It will be sine pi. Sine pi is how much? Zero. But suppose T by Tn is half. It is sine pi by two. So it is one. So phase two vibration amplitude will vary as per a sine curve. Take a amplitude. And that's why I'm not taking the negative side because I'm talking about amplitude. So this is how phase two vibration amplitude will vary depending on how much ratio T by Tn. And this is how phase one vibration amplitude will vary. This is how phase one vibration amplitude will vary. Now, why it remains one always? Why it is one always? Because T is equal to, let me see. Yeah, this is, this is phase one vibration. So phase one vibration is 2F0YK when small t is greater than half time period. If small t is less than half time period, this cannot achieve the maximum value. So it remains this. So phase one vibration this is the maximum value when T is equal to capital T. This cannot reach this value because, I mean, the maximum value occurs at T is equal to half time period. But in our T half time period, se chota hai. it cannot acquire that maximum value. So it acquires the maximum value when time period time T is greater than half time period. So this is slightly difficult to digest. Abhi is for a difficulty aega, but finally this dotted line is phase one amplitude and solid line is phase two amplitude. E dono ko compare karke hum highest value ko agar retain karenge, then the graph looks like this. So this is the graph of highest vibration value. So this is called response spectrum. This is vibration amplitude and this is T by Tn. X axis is T by Tn, Y axis is vibration amplitude. And this is how the graph looks like. Fine. So whenever do up to this period, phase two amplitude is greater than phase one amplitude. So I, I retain this. And after this point, Phase one amplitude is greater than phase two amplitude. I written this. Finally, I get my graph looking like this. This is called response spectrum under pulse excitation. 
response spectrum gives me maximum vibration amplitude as I vary T by Tn ratio. As I vary T by Tn ratio, how the vibration amplitude. So if the T by Tn ratio is somewhere here, it is system is better because vibration amplitude is less. But if T by Tn ratio is after this point, then system vibration amplitude will always remain equal to this. Uske baad, wo jitna bhi badega, maximum vibration amplitude mein koi farak nahi hai. So, I will give you the PPT PDF today. So, today we have discussed some of the unusual transient excitation. We have also discussed how the response will look like and we have found out response spectrum for pulse excitation. Yesterday, we have found out response spectrum for half sine curve. Today, we have found out for pulse excitation. Similarly, we can find out response spectrum for other kind of excitation, triangular and many other things. Okay? But those will be your homework. So Tuesday, we will have class test. Wednesday, we will have two lectures. So, you can leave Tuesday 12.15, we will start our class test. If you want to say otherwise class is over. I will give you the PPT today on. Why didn't phase 1 and phase 2 superimposed? Superimposed means? Phase 1 vibration amplitude will vary in its own manner. And phase two will vary like this. This is coming from this mathematical derivation. I, I since you have not done the derivation yourself, I'll give you the PPT. You read it. After with this, if you have any doubt, Wednesday we'll discuss. Take care. Okay, sir. Well, huh. Now, whether you want a problem solving or doubt clearing, I don't know. Before the class test, if you want, I can give you a time tomorrow. Otherwise, I leave it. So I'll leave it, I'll leave it on Srabha and Aditya. If the student want a doubt clearing or problem solving, you decide today, tomorrow morning, sometime you decide, I can give you some time Sunday morning. Otherwise I drop it. Okay? So can you... we have it on Monday because... No, 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 no. Monday you have your scheduled classes. And Monday afternoon I'm busy. Okay? Anyway, if you don't need my help, fine. But if tomorrow Actually, I can... Actually, uh, tomorrow we are having gate, sir. Gate exam. Some you are in time. third year. You are in third year. You have not learnt anything in engineering. Why you are appearing in gate? I hota to gate band karke rakta. Online me gate bilkul band rahega third year ke liye. Bache kuch sikha hi nahi. Kya sikha? Pahle vibration me pass karo, uske baad gate exam me bato. Anyway, so tomorrow I will not load you. Okay, chalo. See the class test me jayenge. Okay, you can leave now.